such an occasion to down bows, you know, right in, in, in string bowings, because uh, you, you don't have to do it. This is my very personal access to that. Uh, that's the one thing. Um, the, 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 the appoggiatura the, uh, the, uh, ah, yes. could come out more clearly. Then you know this slur from C bemol to Fa uh, is not original by Mozart. So w w we can do it, but it's not a must. Um, yeah, you do a yeah, you do. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. It's just, it's just important to know ah. that by Mozart you could also see that would be another possibility to, to see it. Now, this Fa is so important for me and you almost swallow it. Always the line starts with the low and with the lowest note. And appoggiatura, a little more clear, appoggiatura. And then syncopation means light, as a contrast. And here my suggestion would be to play the staccato notes shorter. Because again, as I mentioned, in this hall, in this room, you understand every articulation. But if you happen to play in a room that's bigger, that has bigger acoustics, you would say, does she play it there? Yeah. And then the important thing for me in this uh, passage is, pam pam pim, 
bum 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 yeah. bum bum yeah. bum 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 the cadenza ends here. Um, uh, just for, for the others. Uh, you have that, that trill and then you have... Right? And many people now play a cadenza. But in my feeling this is not correct because we have a second fermata. So we have the first fermata for the orchestra and we have the second fermata for everybody. So in other words, whatever you do there and you end on the far and pause it for everybody. Yeah? You, you did right. I just yeah. wanted to emphasize that for, for the others. Because some people then after the far start the big cadenza. I don't think it's right then Mozart would not have written two fermatas in the same bar. Mm. No? Just to think about. Let's go back to the beginning. Yeah? Okay, one suggestion. 
this is a ping pong with the orchestra. Mm -hmm. uh, try to play with a direction into end of your phrase. Now, da -da 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 -da, not like an explosion. Da -da -da -da. Play uh, slowly one time. Da -da -da -da. With a ray. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> You know? This is ah, the it's uh, yeah. more going to the... So you hand over the phrase to the strings. More, more than, not this, but like... Uh, right, right, ah. right. Mm -hmm. Sharp. 
The darker sound helps you. For the long note, yeah, tada, tada. This is it's very customary to play it that way. But I, I believe that Mozart always has written a Lombardic rhythm when he wanted it. Do you know the Gran Partita? Mm -hmm. Okay, it's your pa it's our passage, clarinets and bassoon, second part of the first movement. Da -da 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 -dum, ba -dum. Param, da -di -di -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. It's written one sixteen note, one dotted eight note. Right? So, in other words, Mozart always writes out Lombardic rhythm when he wants it. So, in this case, I think two choices are or before the beat. Also, I have written about this in, in my uh, thesis about the concerto mm -hmm. okay. that, that you got. Um, Leopold Mozart in the violin school writes about this kind of passage, I uh, say it now in German, so dass die kleine Note ganz gelinde in die große Note hineinschleifet. In English, so that the small note slightly gli uh, glides into the larger note. Mm. So th this is, of course, uh, we know that uh, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart didn't follow the directions of his father through his whole life. But in this concerto, written in 1774, he certainly wasn't an influence of his father. That was his, uh, you realize this was his first wind concerto, very first wind concerto, written in June 70, 1774. It was a very quiet, peaceful time in Salzburg. There were no, no travels at that time, no travels with, you know, with a carriage, where they were shaken for, for days and hours. So he was very relaxed. And this is one reason why the third movement is not some kind of but it's just a very relaxing menuet because he seemed to have a very relaxed time at home in Salzburg, in the house that you can still see today, the house where this concerto was written. So back to, back to the reality. 
This is why Leopold Mozart and Father Mozart described it so clearly. He said the small note should slightly, no, quietly slide into the bigger note. Slightly. No, that, that's the trick. It's hard. So I think I usually play because then it makes also a nice, um, a nice contrast to the first violin. Okay. Let's go from here once more. For the for the first violin, yep, first violin. Ah. Yeah. What about a cadenza? You have your own cadenza? Yeah, it's not good. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Maybe we can talk about this. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> I have here the cadenzas that I have mostly used. So. Um, it's basically using the material that we have, except for this. This is like um, a variation of what Mozart has written. Getting always faster. Mm. Yeah, there's not more to say about it. Do you want to try to sight read it? Uh, yes, maybe not so fast. Yeah? No, not too fast. Because no. it's a little bit hard yeah, to yeah, read. Yeah, it, it is my handwriting. Yeah. <laughs> then you put yourself probably probably in front of Mozart and this I don't think this is advisable. So just a little as a little example. Do you want to the second moment? <laughs> 